Jason Burmes, and we are now joined by Sam Labrier of Montreal 9-11 Truth, and we are Change Montreal. And he's the one that broke this story about this conference adapting to a new world order, but I'd like to get some background on him. Uh, you, you've done some of the confrontations that are on YouTube, including Howard Zinn and others, correct? Yeah, um, when Howard Zinn came to Montreal, yes, I was uh, involved with the group that went and confronted him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's kind of disappointing because Zinn has done some really good work. Obviously, the people's history of the United States of America is a great eye-opener for anybody who's still stuck in this left-right paradigm. They don't understand corporatism and that, and that type of, you know, reality. However, he doesn't want to talk about 9-11 whatsoever, and he takes kind of that Chomsky approach where it's unimportant. Yeah, I don't know um, what to make. Uh, to be honest, um before 9-11, uh, Chomsky and Zinn were two of my biggest heroes. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I lost a lot of respect for them after 9-11 when I saw their uh, reaction to 9-11 uh, Truth and just dismissing it like that. Well, I don't I would have really to say know pretty... what to make of it. Mm -hmm. If somebody got to them, you know, if they threatened their lives or their family uh, because of their influence, because they were so respected in the... Uh, in the left-wing world, or whether or not they really are agents, uh, deep cover agents, as some people say, I really don't know what to make of it. Well, you know what? Uh, I would say that uh, Zinn is a lot less suspect than Chomsky. I mean, I have Chomsky coming up in my next picture, Invisible Empire, where he literally gives a two-and-a-half-hour lecture entitled The New World Order, and that's from at least, uh, I want to say, early 90s, so, you know, at least 15-plus years ago. He's well aware of this global process and how they've been consolidating power for some time. I mean, he writes about it. He speaks about it. But when you start talking about false flag terror, it's just a non-issue. It doesn't matter. Just like the John F. Kennedy assassination doesn't matter. So i got to ask you, how did you how did I miss this story? Where did you find out about this conference, and why don't more people know about it? Was this in the news locally where you are? Um, actually, to be honest, it was another member of uh, Montreal 9-11 Truth that uh, told me about the conference, and um, we were planning on uh, contacting Alex together uh, to let him know about it. Uh, unfortunately, um, he had to work on uh, Monday. He wasn't able to make it out, and, uh, and I, I wasn't working, so I was able to make it down and, um, and report for Alex, but it was actually another member who, who brought it to my attention. I don't know how they first heard about it. Mm -hmm. but it so you actually on, physically apparently. went there, right? Yeah, um, yesterday and today, and we're going tomorrow. Uh, there's a big speech tomorrow by Madeleine Albright, which is entitled, um, oh, hold on, I have to find it here exactly what it's called, The Americas and the New World Order. Yes, that's the one at the 12-hour luncheon. A lot of people don't understand that Madeleine Albright has been discussing a new world order for almost 20 years from now. And again, she'll be an invisible empire at another panel talking about the new world order with other world leaders. I mean, this woman is another proponent of globalization. And just looking at the topics here, if you have been there, I really do want to talk about these things. You know, Monday and Tuesday, it's all about globalization. It's about the new financial system and its crisis, where it's going to come out of this. And then it seemed like today's focus was more on sustainability, sustainable development, and the psychological health in the workplace. I mean, what is that about? Sustainable development and psychological health in the workplace. What that tells me is less for us, and no one asks questions in the workplace. We want good little worker bees. We want little slaves. But he was there, Sam Labrier, Montreal, 9-11 Truth. So we're going to get the first-hand accounts of what all these forums were about. Hopefully he's taping these things, and uh, they're going to be up on YouTube soon because there's going to be no media coverage about this in our country. It doesn't matter that Madeleine Albright's giving a speech on America's in the New World Order. It doesn't exist. We'll be back after this. It's the Info Warrior. Acolablue.com is the premier atmospheric water generator. Grabs the moisture right out of the air, seven and a half gallons a day with her smaller unit, very affordable, then passes it through seven filters, including carbon and reverse osmosis, neutral pH, no pollutants or toxins, absolutely the best water you've ever had. Literally, drink it. 800-691-6043, 800-691-6043, or acolablue.com. How do you spell that? 
E-C-O-L-O blue.com. Acola blue.com or banners up on infowars.com and prisonplanet.com. I cross my heart. I take the vow. I'll never turn. I'll never bend. I'm with you now Until the end We are back and we're joined by Sam Labrier of Montreal 9-11 Truth talking about this Adapting to a New World Order, the 15th Annual Conference at the Hilton Montreal Bonaventure Hotel, uh, conferencemontreal.com. Now, is this, this is the International Economic Forum of the Americas. That's their forum. And now it's all about a New World Order. You've been covering this now for two days. Are you in there with a camera? No, actually, um, on Monday it was impossible to get in. Uh, there was police everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, we tried to find a way in, but every ex ent entrance we could find into the Hilton was guarded uh, by security. Today, however, um, the weather on Monday was really nice. Today, it was, it was really uh, miserable outside, and there was nobody. When I got there, I was able to walk right into the hotel, and you can't actually walk into um, the conferences because the conferences cost several hundred dollars uh, per conference to go to. Mm -hmm. So they they're pretty uh, good. No, they're elitist. I've been sure. to yeah. I've been to conferences before. You know, they want you to spend all this money on a tag and ha ha ha. You know, they they love giving speeches apparently though about a new world governance and thriving in a new financial order. Now, thriving in a new financial order says to me they're looking to do some you know reconsolidation of power. We may see an Amero with this administration. I, I mean, what well, what is the vibe you're getting from this conference? Um, well, we met a reporter on Monday who works for a big uh, finance and investment magazine who had media credentials and was allowed inside, and we asked him several times if they were talked about the uh, North American Union, mm -hmm. and he told us that, uh, no, not today, but on Wednesday is supposed to be what they're talking about a lot on Wednesday. And that well, I think that that's got to be it, because if you look at the first thing that they're going to do, instead of the Securities and Prosperities Partnership, the SPP documents we know about now, it looks like it's going to be renamed the Public-Private Partnerships in Infrastructure, the PPPI, and Emerging Economies, the Conditions Necessary for Their Implementation. Okay, and then uh, the fourth thing, European Union, America's free trade, the sensitive issues. And so, in other words, reading in between the lines, this is what we're now going to call it. We're going to bring public organizations in through all this new funding, all this, you know, Give Act money in the United States, and I'm sure they'll be funding it in from Canada as well. And then we need to develop a system that's a lot like the European Union, but there are going to be some sensitive issues with America's free trade, despite the fact that we've passed CAFTA, despite the, the fact that NAFTA has been for, around forever. You know, that's not enough. They want these super highways to gut through Canada into Mexico and really amalgamate the three countries into this new union. I mean, that's, that's something that they put on paper themselves and they seem to be discussing tomorrow, uh, which is all about the quote-unquote Americas. Um, yeah, well, it's interesting you should mention the superhighways, because I'd always heard of the Trans-Texas Corridor, of course, mm -hmm. um, but actually somebody pointed out to me yesterday a, a big conference that's going on up here about the northeastern part of the corridor, mm -hmm. and um, it's officially getting underway as well, which I had no idea, so I'm... Now, where is that yeah, coming, the, coming through? Is that coming through New York State from Canada, or...? Um, to be honest, like I just learned about it today, so I didn't get a lot of details. Mm -hmm. um, I just saw that there is a big conference or big planning event um, regarding the, the the northeastern part of the um, of the corridor. Um, I'd be happy to, to send it to you what I what I learned about. Yeah, definitely to send it over to myspace.com slash Jason Burmis or Rob D at Infowars. Dot com. But again, that coincides with these SPP documents because it's not just the Trans-Texas Corridor. It's literally four super highways that got the country, one on the West Coast, one on the East Coast, two in between. And that is their plan. Vicente Fox openly told Luke Rudowski of WeAreChanged.org that it, that indeed did occur and that he felt like it wasn't happening fast enough. He was upset that the globalization wasn't taking place quick enough. 
It seems, though, with all of this financial crisis, they're now on a fast track to reorganize global government and its image. I mean, I think that's what this is about. And with Madeleine Albright, again, tomorrow, giving the speech entitled The Americas and the New World Order. The Americas literally means not only North America, but South America as well, as they, as they deindustrialize this nation even further and send the automobile industry, for instance, down to South America and China. So this is truly about globalization, but globalization's good. We should all we should all just love global government. Why don't you talk about some of the things that you personally, um, you know, have have uh, problems with global government? Like why why don't we want a new world order? In your opinion, in my opinion, um, you know, I've always said if if the world was able to come together in a sort of a, a kumbaya way, like an organic process.